Hi everybody, Sadbonani. Welcome to my channel, Kamala Mgundanum Ledger. And on this channel, Kulumangama Reality TV shows, I'm a celebrities, Ganyanama YouTubers. But today we're going to do something different because this type of a show is really different. It's a documentary, you guys. About hey, Nyasa, Bangat Uzong Tubulala. Nyambonjo, behind me, I'm shaking. So, the new documentary called uh, Rosemary's Hit List is out, you guys. It's a four-part documentary, but they only have uh, posted uh, the first episode, first part uh, of it, and it's amazing, okay? <laughs> it's amazing. If you are one of those people that are, you know, interested in real crime, and also the psyche of the people that commit such crimes. This is a documentary for you, you guys. I like that they didn't do maybe like an, an hour long um, documentary way. It feels like they're trying to squash everything into this one hour or something or one hour and a half that since it's four parts, it uh, sounds and looks very relaxed, like they want to tell every single detail of the story. I like that, you guys. A lot of the people that are part of the documentary, it's um, her family, like her sister uh, does talk, uh, uh, the boyfriend that, uh, the life that she took, uh, that boyfriend, the brother, the sister, uh, his daughter is taking part and uh, I think from her side of the family, I've only seen her sister that is participating. They also have the investigators uh, that were part of uh, the case. And they also have the journalist. Uh, yeah, I think they have the journalist. And then they have Goko uh, Dineo, you guys. Listen, I was like, at the beginning, I was like, did Goko Dineo know Rosemary in any way? But I think they have Goko Dineo to give... Um, that background knowledge or support information in terms of like culture, how we do our funerals and why so many of our families take our funeral plans and all of that, the things that are done traditionally in our families, because uh, there were there were moments where I feel like, did we really need Ukoko Dineo? I see why they felt like they should have someone like her, but I feel like we could have done uh, without her in the documentary because really for me, I'm interested to hear the story from the people that interacted with Rosemary. What kind of a person is she? You know, how was she like? Did they uh, ever think that she could do the things that she did, you guys? It is done amazingly, the way that they follow a story, guys. From all accounts, uh, the um the childhood girl Rosemary, she was a normal child. The principal actually from the school where she studied does comment. She said she was a very intelligent child. She was a normal child like any other child. There wasn't anything uh that she did, maybe Ube Super and all of that. She wasn't like that a schooling at all, you guys. By the way, it is on show max for those who want to watch for themselves. But if you want to discuss it here, we can discuss it here. So then she says, well, it was normal. Even her sister says that she was normal as a child. She was a really, uh, um, like, a nice big sister to her. She talks about my memories where she would be done at school. She would wait for her little sister. She would never leave school without her little sister. So uh, early on in her life, she really was a good sister, okay? But when we talk, uh, when the people that met her as an adult, they will say that it, it's almost like she was playing a character because they would know her as this very nice person. They do talk about how presentable she was because even pictures, you guys, where she's wearing her SAP uh, S uniform, South African Police Services uniform, that panty horse that they, you know, put on when they're wearing the skirts. You know, they, they're talking about how smart she was and how friendly she was when she was speaking to you, of course, when she didn't have an issue with you. But now and then it comes out that it was she was somebody that uh, would have outbursts, okay? Her sister-in-law does mention this, that she was not, when you first meet her, she would be joking, she would be nice, but when you get to know her, you will realize that this is a person that has uh, anger issues, okay? and she was dangerous and uh, the example that she makes she says that uh, Rosemary used to carry a bag a black bag uh, that had a gun in it all the time so that made you feel like this is not uh, somebody that is safe you guys she also had a step a daughter okay a daughter that her boyfriend the one that she actually 
whose life she took. Uh, she uh, So he had her before they met with Rosemary. And uh, guys, imagine having her as a stepmother. <laughs> Imagine having her as a stepmother. She talks about her father, you guys, uh, just saying how much her father was a really uh, good father. They had a good relationship with him. It's Maurice. Uh, his name is Maurice. They had a good relationship with her father. So when Rosemary came, things changed. Okay. And she also says not only did things change, but her father changed. And she, she gets very emotional about it. I imagine you guys how manipulative she was in that relationship of being a stepmother. And uh, the brother in law, who really is a brother to Maurice, does say that when he met uh, oh, Rosemary, and uh, he didn't see anything wrong with Rosemary. In fact, he was very glad that at least now they know a police. Um, woman you know they know somebody for uh from the police station you know it's always a benefit when you need an affidavit here and there rosemary <laughs> when you need to certify a copy but originally you know you know so it's always good to have a family member that is a a, a police woman or a policeman so he says that he was very happy to, to meet her. He didn't see anything wrong in the beginning in their relationship with uh, Maurice, okay? So, listen, did any of these people that are talking about her, even her colleagues, think that this was somebody that was going to end up uh, being convicted of the crimes that she was convicted of? No, <laughs> you know, nobody thought that. But, uh, you know, as time went and isn't or were happening around her, you know, people were getting suspicious. And remember, this is a person that was working as a police officer and working around police officers and working around people that uh, their job was investigating cases like that. So at some point, someone is going to be suspicious uh, of uh, something, you guys. But there's a lot of things, you guys, that are, it's so fun to watch when they talk about how they even got to investigate uh, the cases. In uh, part one of the documentary, the one that they've posted, they are focusing on uh, the passing of Maurice, who was her boyfriend. They had a child together, okay? But he was not the first person that she had participating in taking their lives. There were other people before that. But the time that they started to be like, no, 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 no something is off here was the passing of Maurice, okay? And there is a mention that actually when Maurice was, uh, um, when his life was taken, that wasn't the first time that she had attempted to take his life. There was a time when uh, she had tried to burn the house down with him inside and he had managed uh, to escape, you know? And they talk about how weird that whole situation was, but people didn't suspect, you know, how weird that situation was that uh, Maurice was sleeping. And while he was sleeping, she had taped her uh, daughter's clothes and uh, took like important documents like birth certificates and all of that, put it in her bag and left the house. Maurice is sleeping. I don't know if he was dragged, you guys, because how come he wasn't hearing anything when she was preparing to go? But anyway, uh, later, uh, he, he wakes up and there's a lot of smoke in the house and then he rushes out. And uh, when they had put the fire out, they realized under the bed, I think there was like three or four two liter bottles with, um, uh, with petrol. So it was supposed the whole, the house was supposed to exploit uh, on on him, and he was supposed to pass, but it didn't happen. Okay, so now you guys, obviously she had tried, and I think that he was suspicious now that something was going to um, happen with him. And they do say that their relationship at the beginning was great between the two of them, but then it became more volatile. At some point, he even made a decision that he wanted to kick her out of the house even called a moving truck to come and pick up her stuff, packed her stuff. And when she came, he was like, this is it. I'm done with you. Here is a truck. Take your things and go wherever. I don't care where you go. And what she did was like, I'm not going anywhere. Went to the house, took a gun and pointed it at the uh, uh, moving truck, the, the person that was driving the truck and said, listen, go away with this truck. And she says that uh, the sister-in-law says that when she was telling that story, she would always say, listen, he will never break up with me. I told him that nobody breaks up with me. We are going to be together until death do us part. Okay. 
So, but behind the scenes, when all of these things are happening, and basically Maurice was now in a relationship that he did not want to be in. It was a, 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 a relationship that uh, was had GPV in it, you know, because he was in this relationship because he he basically was being pointed with a gun in his head to be like, you are staying in this relationship. Uh, I'm not leaving and you are not leaving either, okay? Behind all of that, it was her busy with AMA consultants, ASEMA insurance companies taking insurances, you guys. I think they said that he, she had like 16... What? <laughs> What? He, she had like over 16 insurance policies on her boyfriend. Okay. All, all kinds, all mutual, Ashupolo, Bajeti, you know, Metro. Yogi, guys, if you think insurance company, she had it. Okay. She was earning 18,000 rand, 18,000 rand eh, eh, before tax, okay, cross, okay. So if you say cross, you know, Mago, 18,000 cross, maybe you are taking home like 12,000 ganja. She had 7,000 deductions for insurance, you know, which explains why at some point they had financial uh, challenges with him because they were renting a house here. Remember, he is, uh, she was a police woman, you guys, and he had gotten a very good job with the American embassy in South Africa. He was a driver, so that was a good job. But their finances didn't look like they both had good jobs because Usis was busy paying so much on uh, insurance, okay? So 16 insurance policies on him, okay? So now, you guys, here's the funny part, because he, anyway, sometimes, you know, when they say, would see dead bodies speak, they really do speak, because uh, when they were analyzing Ama documents that she had used to take, because remember, you guys, you can't take life policy on me without letting me know, without me giving you permission to say you can take life insurance on me. I can take life insurance on myself, but I can't take it on an, another person. If I do, they have to give me permission to say you can do it. So I, they, they'll have to sign. So, you know, he was, she was taking insurance on the boyfriend, but she had to fill in the form as if the boyfriend is completing the form. But here is the funny part when she's completing the forms. Okay. Now they ask a question, uh, occupation or, oh, no, 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 name of the employer in the form. She's supposed to put the name of the employer. She writes SAPS, ne? because I guess she, she, she forgets to go to Pella. <laughs> she, she forgets because it's not her form. She writes SAPS and then she scratches it out and then she writes American Embassy. <laughs> And then, um, which as there's some, something, oh, yes. And then they, they ask the surname, you know, she writes in Lovu and then she stretches it out <laughs> and then she writes the correct surname. And she submits that form with that information. What? You know? So that's what she would do, you guys. All of these insurances. And then now it was time she wanted to collect. They say that a month or so before, uh, the boyfriend passed away. She had called the insurance company, one insurance company, to check if everything was in order. Uh, if, you know, like the, the premiums were in order. So she called and they told her that there was one payment that had not gone through. Okay. I think maybe for this insurance, she had put the boyfriend's uh, begging details and he had realized that they are deducting this amount for a life insurance and he had cancelled it. Okay. So he called, they told her, no, uh, you are behind by one payment, okay? So she made sure that that payment is made. And then, I don't know if two weeks later, then, you know, he is missing, okay? Then the strange thing about him going missing is that he goes missing. Uh, she calls the brother to say, listen, uh, and his brother is like, but why are you calling me? Because you are the policewoman. Shouldn't you be opening a missing person's docket in the police station where you work? Because you work there, <laughs> you know? So she decides to go and report it at work. When she comes to work to report it, the investigator says that she came and just said, hey, yes, umoris, man, agabuile, kai. 
and then the the the, the investigators like how you are a policeman you, you know you are a policewoman you know that in order for us to take you know the case further you have to bring the photo they know what to, if you are reporting someone missing you have to bring the photo but she did not bring the photo and they did not understand i mean you work here at the police station you know that every time someone comes to report somebody missing we ask for the photo why didn't you bring the photo okay and then you guys like after like a, a few days of people looking for him they did they do find him and then when they find him she is not there you guys hey dramatic dramatic so they do not find um or they find him but she's not there another investigator or or another person from the police force goes to take you know the the exhibits or whatever the evidence from where the body was found okay he comes back to the police station, okay? <laughs> Kelly, you know those plastic bags that you put the evidence in that we see in movies? He comes back with that. There was like two bank cards there, a tie and some money. When he comes, when he enters the police station, before he even tells them what happened, nobody knows who the name of the person is that, that uh, was found. That they just know that they found somebody uh, that had passed somewhere, okay? When the police... This man walks into the TV station. Rosemary. How? The policeman is like, eh, hey, sis, what's wrong? <laughs> Everyone is like, what's wrong? He's like, oh, they've killed him. Oh, me and then they're like, but but how do you know it's him? Because they were still investigating themselves. Nothing was confirmed. They're like, how? So even the policeman is like the, the investigator is like uh, 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 something is fish, but he doesn't say. He's just looking at the situation. Uh, Sister, why are you crying? Because we did not say it's your husband. I but he lapped. Must have been that question. She fainted, and they're like, hey, okay. But you can see what it's a fake fainting. We have one got She fainted. So he will have a final ambulance. The ambulance is a. I think they take it to the emergency room or something, but everyone is just like, what is happening here? How did she know that the person that you guys found was a husband? But it turns out was her a boyfriend, but it turns out it's her boyfriend. So everybody's like, is it? You know, remember, but I'm seven in jail. Well, sis, but to be sis and so I'm a I'm a victim that GPV, you're born and you go, you know, was Kuluma Nabogate and all of that. Okay, but like a ganjal, same time, ne, there's another police uh, man, ne, a colleague of hers that had been on leave. Okay, he's just coming back from leave. Guess what happened when he was on leave? He gets a call from Mamuske Beng. Oh, Mamuske Beng is like, eh, hey, span ban. If you are Zulu, you have ink on speed dial, my fellow phone and getting in Kabi, like a pangs are milling Kabi. Ah, guys, just because I'm Zulu doesn't mean as in Kabi mean. Not this this man, now the same thing happens to him because he's Zulu. He's like, I wang for Nell, a man who go at time, such a living, not all the time I've born him seven in a tire as in Kalungs are milling Kabi. Lobabut, Nkab, a young tongues are milling cab. I say, Nansas are living. I confused Lobabut. I clamber, clamber, bashama investigation, Bafuna, in cabs of a scissors. Well, he doesn't say that, but I'm just thinking, what did he think? So when he comes back from work, he is walking in to a situation where a, her boyfriend has passed. So she, he's shocked by that. But then there is uh, office gossip here. You know, there's police station gossip that this one had borrowed money from somebody here and it, it, she had borrowed 10,000. Now this colleague is adding up. This person called me talking about Uguti, she's looking for Inkab. And then my, when I come back, M7 is in 10,000. Because the boyfriend that really bad, it looked like he was. Um, tortured you know what shower or something before i shown it wasn't like and all of that okay 
this colleague, but this colleague we are Saba because now he realizes it's okay. I'm dealing with a dangerous person here because he was she she was looking for you in Gabi. She was uh, uh she borrowed ten thousand. The boyfriend uh, has passed, and now she, he says good if he goes to the seniors now and say good this is what is going on. He was going to have to be immediately transferred to another police station because obviously his life was going to be in danger. So he keeps quiet with this information. So far, we don't know whether he, he later on reveals that information or not now. Now, the case Yokbulawa boyfriend is given to another officer who is not so competent. Yabonangelama police uh, officers in Jena, Ivagashela, a police station by Kotugele, by a police station by Kotugele, by Tateli Live, Bahole, by Puzel, Yabonangelo. So, and then there's another very, uh, you know, good one, good investigator. His office was opposite the other one, the lazy one, you know. So, he was the one that was given this case. So, now he says every time that there is insurance claims with insurance companies they need confirmation from the police that you know everything is in order they they don't suspect that maybe someone was killed or anything like that there's not no investigations that are still going to be done and all of that so the the they were signed he hears them he hears this one rosemary talking to the lazy officer and tell you to sign my forms lazy officer signs the forms he overhears that one comes and says, Master Hambile comes and says, you know, and he says, I'm an insurance uh, uh, claims. And then he's like, no, I'm busy. Before I put I'm busy. I'm, I'm busy. And then he lies this one and says, listen, can I make copies? Because we need to file these documents. Okay, I'm photocopy. Mistake. If the first mistake was that for me, SAPS instead of American embassy. <laughs> and then now, finally, and then this officer decides, you know what, I'm taking over this case, you know. And this one, Vele, that one was lazy. He didn't protest. He was like, ah, Vele Titan, you know, the case. Takes over the case, calls my insurance companies and, and, and blocks some payments, which makes her mad. Comes to the office, she's mad to go to the block her payment, and the officer is investigating. And then the officer does a little bit more. This is how they find out who today is more, more than just Maurice. Okay. The officer asked the insurance company to send her, him I'm a record, I'm a payments that had been made to her. Okay. And then that's where he find he finds in mine. Yeah, your yeah, information which this one has been receiving. I'm an insurance payment left, right, and center. And then he's like, Lana Gokshoneban, but to cousin, Lana Gokshoneban, who's his work, Lana Gokshoneban, who needs, Lana Gokshoneban, who nephew. Then he's like, Oh, yo. that's when they realize it was okay. We are suspecting what he had, she had something to do with the boyfriend, but it's bigger than that. Okay. So far, that's what they, they've done, part one, you guys. But I think the sad, sad part about this part, you guys, was really, honestly, the, the involvement of his daughter, Maurice's daughter, because honestly, uh, she lost her father, you know, because of Rosemary, and also the mother. The mother seemed like she is still, like, in mourning, like, uh, and I understand why, you guys, and the way that she was crying, she even goes to the gravesite and all of that. For her, it doesn't look like she has accepted that her son is gone. There was a sad part for me about this documentary. But guys, please, if you get a chance to go watch it on Show Me's Go and watch it, it's <laughs> it's good. Yes, evil, lo, mama, lo. Yabana, lo, fane, baba, fane, sen, sel, no, no, nandip, yabo. They need the same cell. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Do not forget to check out the uh, documentary on Showmax. Also, share the video with your friends, with your family, and even with strangers. Nintanda. Cool.